Anzac Day on ABC Radio. It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way, you know. It's a long way to Tipperary. To the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. That's what my dad used to say as well That's the wrong way to tickle Mary That's the wrong way, you know That's the wrong way to tickle Mary She's the sweetest girl I know Goodbye, Piccadilly Farewell, Leicester Square it's a long, long way to Tipperary Cos my heart lies there <laughs> <laughs> Yes, live in our studio yesterday That's Phil Dye alongside his partner Lee Louise And a long way to Tipperary Now Phil has been a musician for a long time But I listen, uh, recently learnt that he's been diagnosed with uh, throat and tongue cancer and his doctor has told him that uh, after radiation therapy, he's no longer going to be able to sing. Now, last night was Phil's final gig as a singer after all of these decades and he chose Anzac Eve to sing a whole series of wartime songs and uh, military-flavoured songs to a very appreciative audience. But before his Anzac Eve gig, he came in to have a chat to me and to sing a very special song as well. Here's Phil telling me a bit about his life as a musician. I've been playing for 54 years, singing, well, professionally, for 54 years. I started when I was 14 in a um, a cafe restaurant in West Ride at West Ride Station. Right, yes. Where I had uh, a, um, a repertoire of five songs. And I thought that would probably be okay and just do one bracket. And they said, no, keep going. So I just did the same five songs again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had realised I had to learn a few more songs after that. Well, fair enough. Yep. I've been told by my highly paid research team that uh, you went to England to do some busking and ended up playing for the Queen. Yeah. What happened? Well, I, I was busking in the streets uh, near Earl's Court and these two guys with suits came and stood there and watched a couple of songs and I thought, well, this is weird. People don't usually stand there and watch. Um, and they came up after a song and they said, um, are you here, here tomorrow? And I said, yes, I'm here, I'm here tomorrow. So they came back the next day and uh, there was three of them. I bought somebody else. And they stood there and they watched. And then after a song, I said, look, you're doing anything Thursday night? And I said, oh, no, I'm not doing anything. I said, look, we'd like you to come to a gig. Um, 80, 80 pound. Now, 80 quid in those days. That's a... It was a lot. practically get a flight back to Australia. Oh, like, it was it? fantastic. And I thought, oh, I've, got, I've got this made, right? And they said, look, just do a few songs and um, 80 quid. And I went, okay. And they gave me the address and they said, I've got to be there at a certain time. They didn't tell me what the event was. And it was at Shepherd and Studios. Um... But I didn't know what Shepparton Studios really was. I'd never been there. So I got there in a cab. I had to catch a cab there. And uh, it was a massive place. Massive place. Um, and I didn't see the front because we went in the back way. And no one told me what it was. It was the launch of Australian wines into the UK. So it was the first time Australian wines had gone in there. Right? Wow. It would have been there from Penfolds and Lindemans. And uh, Wolf Blast names. and all of the big names. Okay, all of yeah. the massive names were there, yeah. But I didn't, I didn't even know what it was. Um, but uh, Margaret Thatcher was there. <laughs> and, and the members of the royal family. But I didn't know this till afterwards, right? But they said, you find with the guitar, microphone for the guitar, didn't have, didn't have plugged in. And they virtually just pushed me out. And I... There was this massive amount of people. There would have been 5,000 people. Oh, my gosh. And <clears throat> now I did a few songs and I did a poem. I think I, think I did The Man from Ironbark as a poem. Uh, and then that was it. 
And then on came um, uh, Barry Humphreys, wh- who I met on the way, on the crossing, crossing wow. through. Okay. Barry Humphreys, and then Rolf Harris. But the only reason I was there was because the first act, and I believe it was uh, uh, Rod Harlan Emu, I think that was the first act. What, got the puppet? Sick. The puppet. Guy, okay. Yeah. <laughs> got sick, and he couldn't come. So that they were left with trying to drag people in at the last minute, and they saw me, and they dragged me in, right? And I thought, this is fantastic, it's worth 80 quid, but I just, I saw the amount of people, which you can't really see because of the lights, and I thought, good heavens, this is bigger than I've ever done. How amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, yes, I performed to the royal family and uh, then Prime Minister Thatcher. What an amazing gig. And then I was shunted out quite quickly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and have you been playing all that time? Were you make, making a living as a musician or did you have to get a day job? No, I had to get a day job. I was a, a teacher by trade. Yeah. Um, and then um, graduated on to teaching at university and um, then I went to teach medicine, a bit of bit of medicine um, at the University of New South Wales. But I've always had that, that back... You know, backstop for music, yeah. and um, formed the Moonshiners down in Nowra right, in yep. the in the late seventies and eighties, um, and loved that mainly into uh, mainly playing Irish traditional music and mm. Australian traditional music. Mm. Well, it's a it's a beautiful career considering <laughs> the the highlights with the royalty and uh, and the Iron Lady. It is, but I just picked up off the street, really. <laughs> 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 So fast forward to today, which I've been told is your last singing gig for uh, the foreseeable future. So what's happened? Yeah, um, well, it's, yeah, last singing possibly forever. Yeah. Um, I ate a muesli cluster back in November 23, and it scratched my throat on the way down, and I thought, this is not very good. I'm going to sue Kellogg's over this, right? This is terrible. Um, and then it didn't go away. I thought this this pain will go away, and it didn't go away. So I went to the doctor, and it was I, in the Illawarra. It's so hard to get into an ENT yeah, specialist. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard. So I, I got to one in Sydney, and he put the thing up through the nose, and he said instantly, "I'm so sorry to say this, but, but you have cancer." And it was definitive straight away then. Mm. And then went to specialists to see if they could operate on it, and it's too big to operate. So it wasn't the muesli cluster's fault at all. Mm. Um, it was so simply the throat the, and was part cl- of the tongue, is it? It's mainly the tongue. Right. Mainly the base of the tongue. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's nowhere near the vocal cords, and I, I was really happy about that. But then they said no, because the radiation will, it has to go into that area and it will affect the vocal cords so the specialist said no that you won't be able to sing but i've taken it on myself that well you know they can be wrong and might be able to you know still hold a note at will the end be, of the time you, will you be able to talk afterwards yeah be able to talk evidently evidently they okay. said they'll be able to talk it'll sound differently sound different um and i won't be able to talk for long periods of time they said right. get tired um and got to be fed with a f- feeding tube because evidently you can't swallow as well. So well, that's for the rest of your life. Uh, well, I'm, hope, I'm hoping not. Okay. I'm certainly hoping not. <laughs> how, how are you feeling right now? Very hard to find a feeding tube restaurant in, in no, the Illawarra. This is, this is true. <laughs> this is true. Uh, how are you feeling right now? You... Look, I, I, I feel pretty good actually. I feel okay. The throat feels a bit odd. Um, swallowing's a bit odd. Um, but I've just been to the hospital just, just before I came here, and mm. um, it's a team of about seven or eight people gather in this room, and, mm. and you think, good heavens, this is like United Nations, and, and you, you feel very, very supported, very supported. Well, when the system works, the public system can be uh, really, really good. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you've experienced that. Well, yeah, I was very impressed, very impressed. So tonight could be... Your last gig as a singer for a while, and it's an interesting one, an, an Anzac Eve gig, and you've chosen a whole lot of wartime songs, yeah. uh, including one we've just heard, and we'll get one, another one from you in just a minute. Is this a sort of specialty of yours, or is it a bit of a one-off? No, no, it's not a one-off. I've probably done it for the last ten years around Anzac Day. Um, 
focusing on songs like the like the band played Waltzing Matilda, but then branched out into other songs like Only Nineteen, mm. um, a beautiful song called Brothers Under the Bridge, um, and we're playing at a cafe up in Coalcliffe, which is in the northern Illawarra. Mm-hmm. Um, and Lee Stewart, who runs that, said, look, you know, come up, and he's been all behind this sort of music, you know. He's a, yeah. a real entrepreneur, and he's got a great heart. Um, so, no, I've been doing it for quite a while, because this is the music that really touches me, actually. Mm-hmm. My dad was in the Second World War, and... Um, so, yeah, it's very close to home. Well, I'm very glad to be playing it on Anzac Day for the whole state, Phil. Uh, and we should acknowledge your, uh, your other half, Lee, who's, uh, who's going to be singing this next one. Uh, but I, I believe even if the throat doesn't uh, really recover in the way you'd like it to, you'll still be playing. Still, will still be a bass side man occasionally. Yeah, well, thank goodness for Lee, she can sing and play the guitar, <laughs> and I can play the double bass. Excellent, right? Double bass. Um, I'll still be playing the guitar, most certainly. But well, yeah, I probably won't be seeing much. No, well, I want to wish you all the very best for uh, whatever comes next. But I'm very glad to have you in the studio, Phil. Good, thank you, Nick. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's musician Phil Dye, and uh, as a singer myself, I cannot imagine being told that uh, tonight is my last gig that I'll be able to sing at and Phil did a special song for us uh, on his own this is called Brothers Under the Bridge Saigon It was all gone Same old coke machines As the streets we grew up on Down in Mesky Canyon, we come walking along the ridge. Me and my brothers underneath the bridge. Campsites, an hour from the nearest road to town. There's too much bush and canyon. For the choppers to touch down Ain't looking for nothing Just wanna live Me and my brothers Underneath the bridge Come the western wind Man that dry bush of light Billy Devon got burned up In his own campfire one night We buried his body In the white stone high along the ridge Me and my brothers Underneath the bridge Had enough of town and the street life Over nothing you end up On the wrong side of someone else's knife Now I don't want no trouble Ain't got none to give Me and my brothers Underneath the bridge I came home in 72 You were a beautiful light In your mother's dark eyes of blue I stood on the tarmac I was just a kid Me and my brother Underneath the bridge Come and Zach Day I sat in the stands in my dress greens I held your mother's hand And dreamed of Sister Morphine 
One minute you're out there And something slips That's Phil Dye. Certainly his final uh, radio appearance as a singer. So we salute you, Phil. That's a Bruce Springsteen song and Phil sounding remarkably like Richard Thompson there. Beautiful. That's it for me for today. I hope the rest of your Anzac day is wonderful and I'll chat to you next time here at ABC New South Wales.